Hello friends, this is Tony and I'm going to do a quick boot camp training on how to uh, edit with Adobe Premiere Pro. This is 2019 June that I'm doing this. I'm doing this for a friend, kind of just want to kind of help her out. I'm going to say, first of all, this is what you get when you first open up Premiere. Now you're seeing a lot of projects over here because these are projects I've been working on. This may be blank if you've never used Premiere before, but this will pop up and you may have nothing here. Don't worry about that. Uh, go over here to new project and we're going to make a new project. This is what you'll see. You'll see a little window like this and it will ask you that this may be a little different here. I've been using this thing called OpenCL because there's some effects that I use. Don't worry about this. Whatever's in there, if it comes up with this, it's uh, this selected, it's okay. Probably, you know, there may be some plug-in structure that you might need. For this. Just don't worry about this. I'm going to leave it like that because that's the way I'm doing it. There's some stuff up here in just settings. Listen, we can go over all this stuff later, what all this means. Uh, basically, I'm just going to uh, go over the, the we're going to hit the high points, just what it takes in about 30 minutes to learn how to do uh, some editing and premiere and get some stuff out on YouTube or wherever. So it's going to ask you where you want to put it. Now, right now, I have got selected the place, the location that I want this to go. I'm going to put it in this little uh, hike where I was testing an A6400 Sony camera. And so you see I've already got a project in here. Uh, and anyway, but we're going to make a new project, so I'm showing you just how to do that. So the fact that there's a new project in here matters not. I'm going to say, uh, I am going to select this folder. I'm going to say choose. So what I've done, I've gone inside the folder where I, where I want the uh, project to go. <clears throat> I'm going to say choose. It's going to put me a new project in here. It's called Untitled Now, but I'm going to say uh, Training. And we'll just call it that. And I'm going to say OK. So we know what folder it's going into. Uh, this capture format, none of this probably matters at all. I'll show you why in a minute. So this is going to be what you're sort of greeted with. And so this is this is this is not the way that I like to edit. This is not the look. But this is what Premiere gives you by default in June of 2016. You can see up here I've got different workspaces that I've made. But I'm going to go ahead and just work with the workspace that they give you. Over here's your project window. You're going to have timelines here. You've not got one yet. It's just blank. But we're going to put some video in here. And this is where you do import to start. You can just double click in there. Or you can do, uh, you know, there's different ways you can do it. You can do, uh, I never do it this way. You can do it import. Or you can do command I. Now I'm on a Mac. It might be control I or something on a PC. But I'm just going to double click in this window. And I'm going to go to that particular folder. And I'm going to get some of these clips and this is just me going on a hike. This is 4K video uh, with my buddy Jamie Griffin. We just went out and I was just testing some shots. So now you've got a whole bunch of video in here. Now if you want to organize this, you can put a folder here and you can call this video. You know, you just type in the hole there. And if you want to put all this stuff in there, I'm going to go down and do a shift and select all of it. The reason I'm doing this is it just makes it a little easier for me to manage it. And now, now it's all folded up inside a nice little thing here. If I wanted to put, go down here, you do new bin, you call it music or voiceover. Uh, and you don't have to do that. I'm just showing you can have bins that have additional stuff. Like right now, if I want to go get some music, I could double click on this and then double click inside this window. And I can navigate over here. I know I've got some digital juice, music, stack track catalogs. Let me go over here, and I know this is some place where I've downloaded some stuff. Music royalty for YouTube, music layered. Oh, here's what I got. And I've, I'm going to go in here and just look for the kind. I want waveform audio. It could be MP3. Some of them, sometimes I use waveform, sometimes the MP3s. Now I'm just importing a whole, uh, a whole uh, library of music in here if I want to put music on this. And it all resides underneath here. So you can see you can fold it down there and look at it. Or you can double click here and you can look at your music and whatever. And if you wanted to like hear a song or something, you could click on double click on it, it'll pull up in this window. And you can preview what it sounds like. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play here. And you can see it shows you the levels and all over here. You can you can click at different places in the music and wherever this blue thing is here. So you can scrub through music. Or you can just go to a certain place and hear what it's gonna sound like. Okay, but enough of that. So let's go over here to our video, right? So I've got, like I say, uh, 4K video. Here I am just shooting up through some leaves and trees. 
And this is what you call your preview end. And over here's your program. We've not done anything in it yet. But this is where our actual edits will start showing up. I just wanted you to see kind of how you navigate it. And again, same thing. You can jump around in the video. You can uh, you can you can squash in here. This little blue thing here. You can pull it. And see what you've got. And we're looking at this at one quarter playback resolution. Now you can see it resolves to a really nice looking. Uh, you can grab that blue line there and pull it if you want to. But it resolves to really nice sharp looking video here to save memory though when you're scrubbing through it. You can hit play and it will be a little bit fuzzy looking. That's just because it's it's turned it down to a lower resolution. But so there you go. So let's let's say we wanted let's say see, I came down from the limbs here. Let's say I want to start a video clip from right there. Right here is where you do your endpoints. So it says mark in and mark out. So you can put an endpoint here and this piece of video, if we drag it down onto a timeline, will start right there. And let's say I want to play through it to right about there. I want that to be the end of the clip. I can click that. Now this, this clip still exists all over through here, but this gray bar is all that will go down to a timeline. And jump back over there. Let's come back over here. Now I'm going to show you, or we're going to do a timeline first. And you do this thing, it says new item. You can click on that and you can see sequence. A sequence is a timeline. So it's the same thing. Uh, I call them timelines, they are sequences. And they'll come up, there's different ways they'll come up. I recommend you go to AVC HD. This is just me, because I know that most video that you, most people are working with is 1080p. Now we now we don't have 4K video in here. I'm going to show you the way I do it, and you can do either 4K video or uh, the reason I'm going to do this is, is 1080p. Though most people still the internet, most people on the internet still use 1080p. It's Blu-ray quality, right? And at uh, YouTube, you might you might decide you want to for to use your full 4K, but I like to be able to reframe videos sometimes. So I'm going to pick 1080p 24, um, and it really doesn't matter so much. You call the sequence whatever you want to. We'll call it uh, sample sequence or sample timeline. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you want to call it. And I'll say OK. Now I've got a timeline. So I'm going to pull this bit of video that we've just edited actually down here. And what did I do? I just grabbed in the middle of the screen and I pulled down. It's going to come up here. It says, this clip does not match the sequence's settings. Change sequence to, to the clip settings. If I say change sequence, it's going to turn this timeline into a, instead of a 1080p timeline, into a 4K timeline. So if I want that to happen, I can do that. I'm going to keep existing settings. I'm going to show you something. This is how most, so you see here, this or this is this clip, but see, this is 4K video inside of 1080p video. The reason I wanted to do it this way is I want to show you how you can kind of reframe video. Let's say I don't want to show all these trees over here on this side. I just want to show this beautiful little place where the, uh, where the path is going. So I can click on this video. This is the video and the audio underneath it. If you want to see the audio, you can pull this line down. You can see that there's audio there. And if you want to zoom in, you just grab this little button down here. And you can pull it in. You can zoom. And uh, But anyway, I'm going to kind of pull this back up. But there is audio there. I'm just trying to be real quiet in the woods. And, and you know, by the way, we've got three seconds of this video here. If we want to pull this on out, you just go to the end here. And you just pull it, and you can see there it's going to show you what's going to happen. So I pan all the way over that one. Let's, let's take it up to five seconds and let go. So now we've got five seconds of video, but it's off center, isn't it? And it's way too big. If we click on this, I'm going to show you how this works. You go to effects control. See this effects control up here? And you can position and scale video. So I know that 4K just happens to be really four times the size of regular 1080p video, but if you go to 50% though, that actually is what the screen would be, see. So if I wanted to do that whole screen there, I can resize it that way, or I could go back up to about, let's say 80%, and what I really want to show is this path anyway. So I can go to, this is position of this thing, you, you can drag left, and it's going to go left. You just get over the top of it, see how the finger gets on there, and you click and you drag. And let's say you want to go up a little bit. You go to this one. This is the up and down. This handles sideways. This one handles up and down. So let's say I want to show a little bit more of the path there. You see the reason why you might choose to do 4K video and put it in 1080p. You can reframe a video 
that actually is wide like this and make it more narrow and, and more focused on whatever area you want to do it. Now if I hit play, I'm going to get this. Okay. And the other thing you can do, and this is crazy, but this is a sort of an advanced thing I'm showing you right off the front, but right off the bat, but this is kind of a cool thing too. So I've got my scale set the way I want, and I've got my position set. But maybe I want to hit, uh, uh, if I hit these little things, these little stopwatches, these do are what called animations. So I can click position and scale here, and these turn blue. And I'm back at the very beginning. You notice I pulled this all the way to the very beginning before I clicked on this. Now let's say now I want to maybe zoom out artificially. So let's say I want to get to here, and I kind of want this to be zoomed out. Now watch this. So I'm going to go to the scale here, and I'm going to pull this back, like so, to about 59%. Now I want to get it back to where it's all on the screen. I don't want any of that black showing, right? So now what I'm doing is I'm artificially zooming out from that, uh, from, from right here where I was at 80% to where I get to this point. You can see where the points are, where it goes to. And right there, I stop zooming out and it goes a pan. So you can actually take 4K video and make it seem like you're doing really nice smooth pans and stuff when you're not. So that's one bit of video brought in. Let's bring in another piece of video. Let's go back over here to the video and I'm going to pick another another one. Did I didn't pick the same one. Okay, here we go. And so let's take a look at this. We'll preview it. Okay. I get my cam looks like I get my camera set really well right there. So I'm going to hit my end point, right? Hit play. Looking at just kind of some dead trees in the forest. But it's kind of nice. I like that. That's enough. Now what you can do, just so you'll know, if you want to ever just drag the audio down, you can drag audio down from that clip. And look what I did. I didn't set my end point. I'm going to click on this and hit delete. i got to set my end point here, my mark out. Now if I wanted to, I could pull the audio just from that down. And you, there might be some time that you want to be able to actually grab the video. There might be some time you want to just grab the audio from something and put it under something else. Or you just want to grab the video. If you want to just grab the video, just drag video only here. See, grab that little icon. And then you have no sound underneath this. Okay, so I am going to pull both of them down. And to pull both of them, you just click anywhere in here and you just drag it down. Put it on the timeline. And it should ordinarily snap right up against the other one. Now this one, I'm just going to do the entire thing. So I'm going to go to effects, effects control. I'm going to say 50%. And I know that that is every bit of what's in the camera. 4K. Now here again, you, let's listen just so you'll see what happens. Let's do another sequence. New, new sequence. So let's say 4K. So let's say we do want a sequence that's 4K. So if I'm now I've got this 4K here. See, I got sample timeline there. It's the one I've been working on. It puts the new timeline down here beside it. And if I want to just go here and grab a bit of video here. So here's this other piece of video in the trail. Okay, that looks pretty good there. I'll put my end point here. I'll sample forward a little bit. I like that. There's my, my buddy Jamie cleared his throat there. So I'm going to stop before we get to Jamie clearing his throat. <laughs> and I'm going to hit the uh, out. Actually, you know what? Let's fix that. This would be a good thing for you to see. So I'm going to do the out point here. I'm going to drag this whole thing down. Now I have dragged 4K video onto a uh, 1080p sequence or timeline. This time I'm going to tell it to change sequence and what it does, it changes that timeline. If I close this up, here's the, and it will tell you, if you pull this over here, how big this timeline is. If it, somewhere here it does. See it's 38, 40 by 2160. That's 4K instead of 1920 by 1080. There's all kinds of stuff you can see back in here, stuff that's hidden. I'm, so I'm glad I got to show you at least that. Now our timeline, hopefully, and bring it right back. These are little tools we use, and I'll show you some of those later. But now we have a timeline that is 4K, and anything I bring over here, I have to bring 4K video into it. Not a problem. You can't even tell the difference previewing it here. But if we output this, this would be 4K, and the other one, this other sequence right here, would be 1080p. Okay, so now we've got this new piece of video, and I'm going to pull it down here. I know it's too big, so we're going to have to size it down. And right there is Jamie's uh, clearing his throat. First, I'm going to go here to Effects Control. I'm going to go down to 50 again. Now, here again, I might decide I want it to be 60%. You see that it zooms it up a little, and I can pull it left and right. 
however I want it. I mentioned pulling the audio down, just the audio a while ago, but say we want to get rid of Jamie's cough there. Now watch this. I can right click on this bit of video here. There's all kinds of stuff that shows up, but you can do the one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to do unlink. So see that? I'm do unlink. That means when I click on this, I've got audio and video separate. So let's say I don't like Jamie's cough, and I don't like Jamie's cough there, or his clearing stroke. I'm going to cut right here on the, I'm going to hit my C key. I'm typing the C. There's also a tool over here for cutting. It's that razor. You see, it says C up there beside razor tool. When you learn your shortcuts, and you will, you can do this kind of thing here. So there I've just cut Jamie out. The, I'm going to take that, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to delete it. Now I'm going to take another piece of video here. C. I'm going to do my C again. V. Now I'm going to copy this. I'm going to do Command C. Command C copies it. I'm going to go out here to the side. Why do I got to the side so I wouldn't cover up my video when I paste it or my audio? I'm going to kind of shorten that a little bit and I'm going to drag it over here. And I'm going to bring it in here like that. Now, listen, we have, now we have no cough by Jamie. Cool, right? I just copied a piece of audio and pasted it in to a hole to get rid of Jamie's cough. But that's how you can separate the video from the audio and you can patch stuff up that way. And we do that all the time in editing. Now, before I show you a whole lot more, let's talk about transitions. So you have all kinds of video transitions, and they're typically in the effects down here. And you can go, you can uh, you can go here and look at video transitions. You've got things called dissolves, uh, immersive video, iris, page peels. Some of these things are very trendy, and I don't use them much. Usually, I use dissolves. Added is cross dissolve. Cross dissolve. See how it's highlighted here. That's your default. That means that that's been set as a default, and I like that one a lot. Let's go right here. Let's say we don't want this to hard jump from this scene to this scene. We want it to fade into it. You can go right here where the line is. Right, hold over it, and you'll see how it makes this little red thing. It's left or right. If you get that little red thing, and then you right click, and you do apply default transitions. And it's going to put a cross dissolve there and a thing called constant power, I think. Constant power. Constant power, it fades audio from one to the other. So your audios fade to blend together and your video blends together. Now watch what happens as I drag across this. You see what's happening? That's actually a, a dissolve that's going on there. Now, usually a dissolve of that amount of time is fine. Sometimes you might want one or the other of these to be longer. You can grab on the edge of that and pull it and it will make that video dissolve slower. It extends the time that the video dissolve takes place. And it, you know, these things work independent. You can change your sound. Sometimes it's better to have a very narrow sound uh, dissolve. But that's how you make those things work. And let's say you're really concerned about the color and the tone of, of some of this video. Maybe that looks just a a little bit, I don't know, grayish or something for you. You have this thing up here called color. It's up on the very top. So you got your workspace, but we're going to go to color. And I'm going to click on that. And that brings up really a different kind of workspace. And you're going to need to click on whatever it is you want to adjust. So don't forget to click on this. And then you can go and you can change exposures up or down. Say you want to make the shadows a little richer or you want to make the saturation a little bit more, or you don't like that it's too yellow, you want to go a little bit more toward blue, or a little more golden if you want to. All of these things work so that you can do things like that. And there are different stuff down here. I don't want to get you too um, involved in this just yet. We're just looking at basic color correction. And we can do a white balance select or whatever you want to choose where you want your white balance to be in this image and it might change the, the tone a little bit. But so there you go. Now you've just changed the color of this. Now you could go to your, uh, you could drag this over here, or you could just click to jump to a certain point and say you want to change this one. Now there's, we can go through the whole process again and change the color for this clip. Or if you think this clip color might work for this one, you can do it this way. Over here we got effects controls, and I've, I've clicked on this one that you've edited. I can go over here. When you change that color, it does a thing called lumetri color, or I think it's lumetri, lumetri, however you say it. But you can click on that and do a command C. You can actually color 
you can copy this color setting that you've done to this video. And I can click on this. Now I can do a Command V or uh, well, just whatever paste it would be. I think it would be Edit Paste. There you go. And now, you see what it did for this one? It put the Lumetri there. So now, let me, and you can, you can preview these things too. If I turn the effect off, that's what you had before. This is what you got now. And then, you know, you might decide that that's good enough. Let's look at this one. Let's do the same thing. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to do a Command V, Paste, and here it pasted the Lumetri color on this. I can turn it on or off to test it. And maybe I want a little bit more on this. The thing that's cool is, is you might decide, hmm, I think I would like a little more contrast on this one. And yeah, maybe let's take some stuff out of the shadows on this one. Maybe make our blacks a little bit richer and saturation even a little bit more. You've got all these different options what you can do. Or you can just go with what you have. And so let's do another, uh, let's do it. Sometimes I do, we'll say this, if I go over here, uh, and I'm, I'm inside, I've got to go to effects again, I'm sorry, go to effects. And maybe I don't want one of these dissolves. Maybe I like one of the transitions called a, a cube spin, C U B E. And you do see this a little bit in video. It's not too trendy. This is where you've usually you've gone through a period of time, and you might do a cube spin, which is and it's not going to render it out real fast. But what it does is it spins one image into another. You can see what's happening there. If I do it, the reason this is taking a long time is it's, it's kind of hard to, uh, it's kind of hard on the computer to have to render this after you've done some color correction. But there we go. Now I've, I've applied a cube spin. Let's say we want the audio to be a little louder. You can just barely hear these wood sounds. You can right click on the, uh, the, the audio, really just any part of a clip, and you can go to audio gain. And let's say you, you can do peak amplitude. That means it's going to try to bring all, everything up to its fullest loudness. I'm not going to do this on this clip. I'm going to say I want 10 decibels more audio there. And now I can hear the woods a little bit better. Should be able to. Okay. Now let's decide I want all of this to be 10 decibels. You can, you can get all this. You can get more than one and you can right click and still do audio gain and still do 10 decibels. Okay. And see it brought all this audio up. If you want to see the audio a little better, you can just pull this down. You can see where the clicks and twigs snapping or whatever the sound is there. So now we've edited the color. We've done some uh, crossfades. And so now let's say we want to put a title on some of this. I'm going to hit do a Command S to save. I like to save every now and again. Let's say I just want to say this beautiful woods. So there are titles, pre-built pre -built titles. If you go to this graphics up here, and that's going to bring up a whole bunch of pre-built titles they've done. All kinds of stuff like you might see in, uh, in movies. And I've made some of these. You can pull one of these over here like this and you can put a caption on something. And it, what's kind of cool, these are motion captions. They'll actually like fold up or, or then fold away or whatever too. And the way you, I told you about these tools over here a while ago. They're gone now, you know, so you don't see those little tools, but you have to go back to your workspace. So I'm going to go back to this. I think this is what we had set. And now I can see these little T's and everything over here. If I want to change the text on that, let's click on that T. And I can go over here and I can say, uh, beautiful woodlands. And then I can say here and set this smaller one. I, and what you can do, I, me, I'm triple clicking. And that allows you to select all of it. Or you can, if you want to, you can just do it this way. I'm just going to do it this way and do all of it. And I'm going to say, Morganton NC. So now I've got my beautiful woodlands. Let's say I want this to be a little smaller. So how do I do that? Well, I go over here where the text is and see where I've got this text that says Morganton NC and here's where beautiful woodlands is. There's a little thing here you can twirl down, a little, little arrow thing there you can twirl down. And then you can go to where your source text is here, see? Click that down. And you see I'm using Roboto Slab. If I want to change that font to something like the Skia here or something, I don't know. That looks weird, doesn't it? But that's okay. We're just playing around. And here's the size of the font. I can bring that font down. And let's say that I want to move up some. I'll click on this selection tool here. And then I can take that and I can pull it up over here under, under Beautiful Woodlands, whatever. And the thing that's cool about that, now I've just made me a title. 
out of a preset tile. It just kind of f unfolds there. Wherever I want it to go away, you see I can pull the width of it here and that changes where it goes off the screen. Maybe you don't want to, oh, that, one, that one's nice. It's already preset to uh, fade away. So these are not, it's a pretty nice preset, but let's say you want to make your own. You can click on this T here. Let's go to another place. And we'll call this custom title. And you can just click on that T, go over here on the screen, and you pull a box. Okay, and then I can say custom title. Oh, darn it. And I can make my own title. Now that is not a copy of this one. So when you watch this one, I just clicked off of the T. I'm gonna click back on the screen. If you watch this one, this one just pops up on the screen. It's not animated because I didn't drag it from over here in this graphics element up here. I just made my own title right quick, see? So, and here again, I can pull this. And since this one's not pre-designed pre to fade away, I have to do my own fade on it. I hit the apply transition and do that, and now it fades out. And since it doesn't show up real well, maybe I want to click on that title and go over here. And uh, on this one, I might decide I want to put a background behind it. Look at this. Now, see, that background is so wide because I made the, uh, the box so wide a while ago. I'm going to click on the T again just so I can go in here and it turns the box on. Then I can click back on this thing and I can pull the box in. And let's say I don't, want that, I don't want that box to be so black. I want it to be a, a percentage of that, of, of opacity. I can pull this back and see what happens. I can make like an 88% and it makes it, it changes the contrast. But I've actually got a box that's transparent. So isn't that kind of cool? So now I've made some titles. I've put some transitions and we've done some color adjustments. Let's say I want to export this and put it on YouTube. I'm going to click on this bottom box down here. Now I'm in my workspace that I've made or that came up by default. And you make sure this blue is highlighted around your timeline. And then go to File and we're going to say export media and what's going to happen a dialog box is going to come up here and i want 1920 by 1080 that's what i've been doing and i want I, this frame rate's perfect not a problem with that now i'm going to click on this blue up here i'm going to make sure it's going into the right place here's where i was doing a haircut video the other day i don't want it to go in there do i i want to go into the proper so i want this to go into this location where the forest is where is that So right there's where I want it to go. And I'm going to call this sample timeline is fine. And we'll say save. Now I get to pick how many bits I want to go in. Now so for a piece of 1080p video, if you want it to be really high quality, you might want to go as high as 24 megabits per second. A lot of people will tell you 15, 16, YouTube's going to knock it way down. But I like to give YouTube a high quality piece of video. So for 1080p, I'm going to do 24 megs per second. I'm going to make sure maximum uh, render quality is checked. And I kind of like to make sure that the bit rate is high too, or, the, uh, or that the maximum bit depth is high. So I'm going to do it, render at maximum depth. And I'm going to hit export. And I'm going to know that it's going to the right folder then because I selected the right folder. So what we got now, it's going to take a little while for this to render out. And usually when it gets to the very end, it, it's working on the render now, making all the color adjustments and all the transitions, audio changes and everything that we've done. And toward the end, it'll fake you out for a minute. It'll get to 100% and you'll sit there and wait. That's actually why, what, what's going on is that's when it's writing. It's actually writing the file. So we're going to get to the end here and say 100%. We'll have to, ah, it did it pretty quick though. So now we have, I'm going to save one more time, file save. So now we've got a piece of video. I'm going to minimize Premiere. And uh, uh, over here to the off the screen, I have this particular folder. And we're going to go down to uh, this right here. And there's our sample timeline. It should be 1080p video. And let's preview it. And there's our fake uh, zoom out. Here's our custom title. And here is our last shot, and then we end. And so, folks, that is the basics, just the very basics. I'm just scratching the surface of what Premiere will do. But this will get you going fast. If you get want to follow this little technique here, you can learn a lot, and you can delve deeply in, and you can learn. Hopefully, this has been a big help. Peace to all who watch. Subscribe to the channel if you like.